Hello, welcome back to another episode of the best peaks ever. Today we'll be going we will be going over Tim Duncan, two thousand two to two thousand three. The first thing that stands out to the season to a lot of people is Tim Duncan's care job. Keep in mind while I'm reading off all of these that he won the finals this year. His regular what his teammates were doing in the regular season, Tony Parker was giving 14 on okay efficiency and bad defense. Bruce Bowen was a solid was a solid three and D score. Steven Jackson, solid defender, okay score. David Robinson washed up. Manny Ginobili, a rookie, but a solid defender. Giving you some points on offense, c- coming off the bench, doing his thing there. That's not a championship caliber team. Yeah, he was somehow able to win a championship with these guys. Let that sink in. It gets even worse when you look at the playoffs, as Tony Parker goes from an okay score to a very inefficient one. Bruce Bowen actually steps, actually did okay. Steven Jackson's efficiency drops. David Robinson's defense drops. And Manny Ginobili's efficiency drops. He won the finals this year. Keep in mind, Tim Duncan has elite gravity, so all these shots are open, but his teammates are just walking bricks, looking like Westbrook out there. Not even kidding. Yes, while this team was a very good defensive team, let's not act like they were giving Tim Duncan any room on offense, because they most certainly wouldn't, weren't. Another thing I want to go into is is his playmaking. As I previously mentioned, Tim Duncan has amazing gravity. He'll often draw double and triple teams, even quadruple teams, and hit cutters on their way to the basket. He he would often hit Manu Ginobili on a solid, and he would do the same thing for Tony Parker. He would he'd also. Do him very nice passes. Would do very nice passes to Bruce Bowen for a nice open three. While his playmaking, while his playmaking stats may not show, if you watch the games, you do know that this man was an amazing defender. His pass rating was six, which is very good. Block creation was seven, very good for error and being a non-shooter, non-three point shooter. That is, his playmaking value was sixteen point two, about top thirty-five of all time. And assists about five. Very solid playmaker, especially for a big man. He while he lacked a leverage to make the these very difficult passes, and not and often he would have some fuzzy vision, he was still a very good very good and very willing passer. I would even say an amazing passer. Moving on, we have his play his playoff resilience. Tim in the playoffs was a whole different monster. During the playoffs this year, he averaged 26, 15, and 6 in four blocks a game. The best defender in the league. Very efficient. The impact me- the impact metrics are honestly look video game like. As he was first in player impact plus minus, first in augmented plus minus and fourth in black picks plus minus. Another thing, another stand, standout thing about Tim Duncan is his defense. He was extremely versatile, often switching on to guards. There's often, even in the fi- in the finals, you would see him guarding, regularly see, regularly see him guarding Jason Kidd, effectively. He was an amazing rip protector, I don't, I, if you know Tim Duncan, you know he was an amazing rip protector. Good at affecting shots due to, to, to be having such long arms. He was just a very a very big body. He was pretty athletic, too. He was good at contesting shots because he, he was, despite not looking like it, pretty laterally quick on his feet. And he had long arms. arms so getting a shot off on him was damn near impossible. He also has great defensive IQ. This is a widely known thing. His defensive fundamentals and IQ are off the charts, often making reads that I can't even make looking back at them. Well, sorry. 
I can't even make when I look back at them. Like, I'll have to check multiple times to actually see it, the reads he was making. He has great motor. He he never takes a position off defensively. Now let's look at his defensive stats. He has a 3.5 defensive adjusted plus minus. Three, um, 4.3 defensive real plus minus. 3.6 defensive player impact plus minus. And a 3 defensive box plus minus. All of these are all-time great level. No doubt about it. Tim Duncan would love to call isolation plays in the post. He was very good at attempting jump hooks, fadeaways, shimmy hooks, and other array of post moves that were highly effective. He would often pass out of these very effectively as well. He may be called a big fundamental, but a lot of these posts, a, a, a lot of these post moves are mainly power from his amazing footwork, athleticism, and length. He also had a good, solid face-up game, often being able to hit his famous little bank shot from the elbows from the wings. He creates space on these using very intricate jab, jab steps and side steps. Even footage of him shooting fadeaways and step backs as well. He was very vers he was a very versatile player in the post. Very good at ISO situ situations. He was so good that in the finals, they he would often get quadruple teamed. Yes, you heard me right. As real as that might sound, he would get quadruple teamed. And his teammates would still break, but that's besides the point here. Um, his post scoring was off the charts. Everyone knows that. He would he would throw up shimmy hooks, jump hooks, fadeaways from the post. His post game unmatched, legendary. Some other pretty obvious things. He was an amazing rebounder. And yeah. In summary, Tim Duncan was an all-time great play in 2003. Was an all-time great playoff performer. Great passer for a big, all-time great post scorer. Pulled off one of the biggest carry jobs ever. Goat level defender, amazing rebounder, very good good ISO score for a big. Thank you for watching. Peace out, my friends.